Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. In this video, I'm going to be doing something I usually don't do, which is like a tutorial on some traditional art. This is marbling paper and this is used for book covers it's also used for the end papers on the inside of book covers in all of my replicas i usually put some type of marbled paper in there i have watched several tutorials and read several tutorials i couldn't find a single video that encompassed everything i want to try and show you from the very beginning to the very end everything you need to prepare and then i'm going to show you a few different um patterns that you can do. Basically, I'm trying to save you a lot of time that I wasted. <laughs> in the description box, you're going to find links to all of the supplies that you need in order to make your own marbled paper. And also, at the very end of this video, I will be announcing the winner of the Marauder's Map. Anyways, let's get into it. Yes, I'm wearing an apron because this is a very messy process. I'm actually pretty worried about getting paint splatters all over my equipment, but you know what? Let's do this. I'm not sure if these actually have a traditional name or anything like that. It's like a brush or a rake type thing is what we're going to make. You can buy these. You can make them out of wood and nails too. But I decided I wanted to go a different route because, I mean, this is a lot cheaper, easier to come by. You probably have everything you need for this right now in your house and you don't need a hammer and nails and wood and a drill and all that stuff. So, this is what this is how we're doing it today. Just grab a piece of cardboard and cut out a rectangle that's about the same width as uh, your container that you'll be uh, marbling in. Next, grab a ruler and uh, try and measure about the center of that. It doesn't have to be exactly the center, but you do want it to be a straight line. For this, I'm using my Cricut scoring tool, but you could use anything that really has like a blunt tip that's not going to actually cut the cardboard. You just want to make kind of like a score into the cardboard. And it's okay if it rips through a tiny bit, but you just don't want it to cut all the way through. And now we can fold our piece of cardboard in half, just like this, and then trim off the imperfection so that it's straight across here. And yeah, none of it overlaps. And now we've got this piece that just kind of folds like this. I'm going to line this up on my cutting mat, but you can line it up against a ruler or anywhere where you can measure. We're going to mark everywhere where we want one of our uh, brush pieces, or if you're using wood, it would be nails. We're just going to be using toothpicks for this because, I mean, everybody has them and this is going to be easier. You probably do want to make more than one. I would suggest doing a half inch um, intervals and then make another one that's about an inch intervals. I'm going to make this one even bigger because I've already made those original two. So we're going to go an inch and a half for this one. Use your pencil to mark every inch and a half. And now we, we want to have our toothpicks somewhere where we're ready for them. We need our glue stick heated up and ready to go. And then all we're going to do is put like a little bit of glue on each one of these uh, spots that we marked and then just glue a toothpick to it. And you want each toothpick to come out from the cardboard about the same amount. So I'm, I'm using my cutting mat to measure this. It it's, makes it a lot easier, um, but you can do it with rulers or however you want to do it. Another bonus about doing this with just the tools that I'm using rather than wood and nails is that if you mess up, you can just take the toothpick off and resituate it. Um, otherwise, if you mess up with nails and wood, you're kind of stuck with that. Or you start over. It should look about like that, um, depending on how uh, far apart you placed your toothpicks. And now, uh, it should be pretty obvious, we're just going to put some glue in here and close it up so we have this sort of rake slash brush tool. And you want to press down on it so that it doesn't pop open while the glue is trying to dry. And there we go. 
we have this tool um, for pretty much zero dollars since I already had all this stuff and it's done in just a few minutes. Now we need to cover the work area with plastic. I've just got this drop cloth from the uh, hardware store. So yeah, just cover it up because this is gonna get messy. Next we need some of this carrageenan powder. So this, one thing to keep in mind is you want the Lambda carrageenan, and this is the kind that I got. I got it on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box. This is going to be the thickening agent for our water. So just go ahead and grab a bucket or something that you're gonna be using to mix in. And of course we will need some water as well. Um, some people say to use distilled water. Um, I'm just using tap water. So, and that's what I've been using and it's been working just fine. So yeah, you can do whichever, it doesn't matter. Put some water in your bucket or whatever you're mixing in. And we're going to use an immersion blender here just to get the water agitated and then to mix in the carrageenan. There we go, that looks agitated enough. Some people measure this stuff out. I tried measurements that other people did and it didn't work for me. I found that just sort of doing it until you can feel that it's the right consistency is what works. So I'm just going to put some of this into a strainer above my water and add little bits at a time and get it all mixed in. So now we're gonna check the consistency and the best way to do this is just to kind of get your hand in there and feel the, the, the water and it should feel thick. It's almost like a watered down slime. I know it sounds gross, but that is what you want. It looks really um, cloudy in there and bubbly on top. Our prints won't come out as good if we let these bubbles stay in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer this into back into our jug, an empty jug, and then we're gonna let it sit for at least three hours to let the bubbles kind of dissipate. But don't just pour it in there. We need to strain it because there are clumps in there now that just coagulated and are just stuck in there. So we're going to strain it into our uh, jug here and then that should be good. So I'm just going to hold my strainer here and then I'm going to grab my bucket and slowly pour through the strainer into the funnel and then into obviously the jug of water. You'll see that you're collecting quite a bit of uh, chunks <laughs> inside there for lack of a better word. Don't let it overflow of course. Every once in a while you'll notice that this gets really clogged up with those chunks of slimy stuff and you're going to want to rinse that out every once in a while so that this doesn't get like clogged up completely while you're trying to pour your water. Okay, there we go. So now we have about this much of, of our thickened water and this is called size. So we have just made a batch of size. We're going to let this sit for about three hours and then we can use it. And anything you don't use, you can put in the fridge and then just pull it out and bring it to room temperature and then you're ready to go again. As for your paper, um, watercolor paper works really well. Um, this is 100% cotton, so it transfers the inks really well. But I found that just regular cardstock paper, if you treat it, it works pretty well too. You don't really need any expensive paper. This is the stuff that I used first and I got it on uh, Amazon, so I'll link that as well. But today, we're actually just gonna be using regular cardstock paper. So this is 11 by 17 cardstock. This is A3 sized paper if you uh, do not live in the US. So I've got about two cups of water in this bowl here. And then we also have this alum or alum. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but I call it alum because it's aluminum sulfate. So I, assu I assume it's alum. But anyways, we're going to mix in per cup. It's about a teaspoon or so per cup, I think. So yeah, 
we're going to mix that in and I'm not going to be like super precise about it. I'm just going to like sort of guess that's about a teaspoon. That's about a teaspoon and maybe a little extra just to be safe. There we go. I'm wearing gloves because the package on this says that it can irritate the skin and it can irritate your eyes as well. So don't rub your eyes don't, with it and yeah, don't eat it basically. <laughs> just put it in the water and mix it up. Now, we don't need the immersion blender for this. I'm just going to use a whisk. If the alum separates from the water later and starts to settle at the bottom, you can always just whisk it up a little bit more. Now this we are going to use to treat our paper on one side. What this does is it's going to help the paints actually stick to the paper. Without it, the paints are going to wash away and you're going to have a really kind of washed out, dull looking image. Now before we do anything to the paper, you want to make sure that you put a mark of some kind on the side that you have not treated because then you know which side to actually use when you uh, do your marbling. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all my pages and draw a little X on the back of every page that I'm going to treat. And now we're ready to go. You can use a big paintbrush um, to, to do this or any way that you can think of a roller or something that you're going to be able to get this side of the page coated with the water. Um, you don't want to do like, you don't want to like completely get it saturated, but you do want a even layer across the entire face of the page. You can kind of look at it in the light to see it should be all shiny on one side because it's wet. So here's what we're looking for, just like that. And now we're going to hang this up to drip dry. I've just got a drying rack for my clothes and some clothes pins. I'm just going to clamp this onto and let these pages drip dry. So let's go ahead and do that with all of our paper. Once your paper has drip dried enough that it's not really wet to the touch anymore, press it under something heavy to flatten it out and let it sit there for at least a couple of hours, I would say. I would suggest probably overnight. Lucky for us, I already have some size ready to go that I already mixed and it's it's been sitting overnight. And I have some tr uh, pre-treated paper. Also, it's probably <laughs> important to note that you want to put a piece of like scrap paper in between each one while you press it. Um, I did press these overnight, but mine still are a little bit curved up in the corners, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and pour our size into our container that we're going to use for our marbling. In this case, I'm just using a shallow baking pan because um, it was big enough to fit my paper. But you could do something a bit deeper if you want. It's not a big deal. If you don't, don't worry about it. So let's pour it in there and you can see how thick it is. If this were water consistency, it would be like spreading a lot quicker. This is a thick, slimy water and that's what we're after. And again, we don't want any bubbles on the surface. So if you have a bubble or two after you've poured it in, you either wait for it to go away or to speed the process up, you can use a torch to pop those bubbles real quick and you're done. So I am using uh, some acrylic paints. You're also going to need some ox gall and we're just going to put a drip or two in at first. We'll, you'll, I'll go over that in a minute, but the ox gall is going to help it spread and, and sit on top of our uh, size. So I really like blues, purples, greens, and blacks. So I'm definitely going to use black. I'll go ahead and start that one and show you how the mixture should go. We're going to put some black acrylic into here. I also have this squeeze bottle, which is just water. And I do want to mix a little bit of water in with that paint. Now we'll take a paintbrush and we will mix the paint together. It needs to be thicker than water. 
um, but not so thick that it's not going to drip. And now you can kind of, I know it's hard to see because it's black, but you can see the consistency in there. And now the secret ingredient, our ox gall, we're going to get in a dropper like this. And we're just going to put one, two drops in there, and we'll mix that in. The more ox gall you put in your paint, the more drops that you put in it, the more it's going to spread when it hits the surface of your size. So if you want some that's not gonna spread very much, put a drop in. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this brush with my black. It is now for that. I don't wanna mix my colors with, with any other color. So each one of these mixtures is going to have its own paintbrush. All right, we've got all of our paints mixed and ready. This is where the fun begins. I've just got a couple of these cheap uh, rough brushes. You can use like a splatter brush if you want whatever you want to do, but I'm just going to grab some of this black paint and then I'm just going to tap some of it in there and you can see it go. If you look carefully, it's hard because of the shine on the, on the water from my lights, but you can kind of see it now. It's starting to spread and you just want to kind of tap some of your paint in there. There, now you can really start to see it start to come through. All right, I'll rinse this one. You should probably have more than one <laughs> of these. I have two, not very many, but I'm gonna make do with what I have. And I think for this one, I'm gonna go with some purple. So that's purple and black. Let's see how, how this goes. We're just gonna tap some more. And look at that, you can see all the colors start to like grow. And it's actually looking really cool. So this first pattern that we're doing, this is uh, called the stone marble pattern. Typically you will go from a dark color and then gradually get to lighter colors. I think I'm gonna do this kind of reddish purple that I made over here. It's kind of like a burgundy. I bet that'll look pretty cool with this. And now we'll go for some lighter colors. So I think for my lighter colors, I'm gonna use this greenish and then maybe a little white on top and we'll be done. It almost looks like it's raining. It's really, really cool to do this. I just love doing this. All right. Now, that, that white spread quite a bit, so I'm just going to go back over that with a little bit of black just to kind of make it less white when it's done. So here we go. All right, so there is our pattern. Here's my first piece of paper and I have to make sure that my X is on this side because I know that's the side, the, the opposite side is the side that I treated. And it's best if these are nice and flat. Mine aren't ex not, like perfectly flat. I just got a little paint on the side when I was trying to flatten it out, whatever. And then we're just going to put it in curved and then carefully flatten it out across the top of the water so that the whole surface gets covered. You can even use something if you'd like just sort of hold it in place and make sure that the whole thing is flattened down and you don't have any bubbles in there. And now we lift and to lift this, we're gonna go ahead and grab it at the two corners here, pull it toward yourself and kind of uh, touch it to the edge of your dish and then just let it kind of wipe on the edge of that dish. Just like that. And if we flip it over, this is what we are uh, ended up with. We do need to just really carefully rinse the carrageenan or the size water off of this and then hang it up just like we did our other uh, paper to drip dry. Now, before we can do another, we can reuse this water several times, but what we want to do is take a piece of scrap paper, like a piece of newspa newspaper print or something, or even a paper towel, and you start at one end like this, just dip the end of it in, and then just slowly pull it across the, the top of your size, and that's going to collect all of the paint from the top so you can see the paint right there. All right, so I don't know exactly what all of these patterns are called, <laughs> 
but this one I think is like called the feather pattern um, and it's because it looks like feathers but here let's go ahead and do this what we're doing is we're just making some spots in here and we're just gonna do them kind of evenly spaced all the way across just by touching the tip of our brush to the water as you can see the spots are spreading out and as they should be this one looks like it needs a little bit more there we go that one too and then we take our next color and do the same thing in the center of each one of those as you can see they are just kind of spreading out and looking really neat like eyeballs almost and then we're just going to keep doing that You can also use an eyedropper and drip them in if you want. I'm just doing this because I haven't had a, as much luck with an eyedropper. It always just kind of splatters for me. And I think this will be our last color here for now. Oops, I already did that one, that's okay. Now you can take just the end of a paintbrush, not the brush side, but the other end, and then we're going to just start at one corner and just go up and down across the face of the water. And as you can see, you are making a pattern inside of your paints. Sorry about the scraping. There we go. So there's a pattern. Now we're going to go across this way and do the same thing, starting at the top or the bottom, doesn't matter. And then it, it does start looking like feathers if you do it this way. All right, let's go ahead and take this and transfer our paint onto our paper. And that is our feather pattern. I'm thinking my colors are a bit washed out because I don't have enough paint in here, maybe too much water. So I'm going to add more paint to try and get the colors to pop a bit better. Okay, with some freshly mixed paint, let's see if we can correct the lightness of this. Here we go, let's try this again. Let's go ahead and do that same feather 
pattern, but we're going to do something a bit different at the end. Let's go over that one more time just to get the colors a bit more distributed because every time you do this you're kind of pulling those colors around. So the more you do it I think the more little like stretched out lines <laughs> there are. Ooh, that looks really cool. Let's try this way one last time. You don't want to overdo it. If you overdo it, things just don't look as good. Okay, this is getting close to being overdone, but now we can use our tools. So here's one that I made that is a half inch apart. So I'm just going to start at the top and comb down. And you'll see that a really cool pattern starts to emerge. And now we just need to go over one side again, this side. I'm going to try and do it as close to this side as I can. There we go. There's our pattern. Okay. Here we go. Oh yeah, that looks much better. I just needed to thicken my paint. I needed to use more paint. But look at that. That is so cool. I love those colors. All right, I'm going to try another pattern. This is one that I've seen done, never done it myself. So let's see how this one goes. So this pattern, we start just like the others. And then we will comb it with our small comb. We do it again to make them even smaller. stretched out a bit more. Now I'll take the one that we just made in this video and apparently you're supposed to be able to make little swirls. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I kind of got some swirls in there. Let's see how that turns out. Ooh, that one looks really cool. I love that one. Sometimes you're going to be like halfway through 
starting a pattern and you just love the way that the marbled uh, stone marble looks and it's okay to just go ahead and take a print of that and start over because none of them ever look the same so if there's one you really like take the print start over And now we are moving on to the paper that we treated in this video. So the, the other stuff was art paper. It wasn't watercolor, it was mixed media uh, paper, but this is just plain cardstock printer paper. So let's see how it compares. Whoops, oh God, I almost lost it. <laughs> Oh, that's a really neat pattern. I really like the swirly ones. Very cool. So I have finished marbling and I used up my size. I did as many as I possibly could and I'm gonna show them to you here. Some of them have these like streaks on them. Like as you can see, there's lighter streaks coming down this way, kind of in almost like in lines here. And this one has some of them too across here. And obviously this one. So we can see that kind of streaking in a lot of these and they're very pale. I know that they're pale because I wasn't using enough paint in my mixtures. It was too much water, not enough paint. Adding more paint made the colors pop out a bit more. But do you know what this weird light streaking is on these? Um, my best guess is that there's maybe a wrinkle in the page or something where it didn't completely touch down onto the paint when I was transferring the, the paint onto the paper. But if you know exactly what's causing this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to figure out what exactly is causing this and correct it so I don't make any mistakes in the future. Now let's take a look at the good ones. First, we've got some of the stone marbling. Some of them, I'm not a huge fan of how the colors turned out exactly, like the shades were a bit too bright for me. so. I'm fine with that because I can pull these into Photoshop and kind of adjust to those, those colors and make them look a bit more like how I want them to. Most of these I'm going to be using digitally anyways, so I'll be scanning them in. I can just adjust the colors then. And then we have an, uh, this other style right here. And I really like this one. It sort of reminds me of like the night sky or like a galaxy out in, out in space or something. And I was just trying different things with these to see what it would look like. I really was having fun doing the swirls and things in here. I thought that was turning out really cool. So maybe next time I'll do something similar. I don't know what happened here though. That's either like there was a hair inside of my water or it's white paint in a swirl. My best guess, it was a hair. But I think my favorite one that I did was this one. I just really like the colors and then I had a little bit of paint left and I wanted to use it all. So I started doing like trying different things. So here's this one. This one is like red, white, and blue, but I, I was kind of like thinking of Spider-Man after I put the paint in. So I tried to do like a spider web looking thing here. And then I tried kind of something different here too by like just spreading the paint in these little star shaped patterns. This next one, I don't even know. I was just trying things. And then this one was the very last bit of my paint. It's not very exciting though. Out of everything I did, I think these four are the ones that sort of turned out looking the coolest. This one being my favorite. But anyways, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this uh, traditional style paper marbling. Um, 
I think I'm gonna start using my own marbled paper for some of my book binding tutorials and stuff, and maybe even make a journal with this as the cover. And I can show you guys how to do that too. Are you guys gonna try this? Um, if you do try it, I'd love to see pictures of what you guys come up with. It's like really fun to do and super addicting. And now as promised, the winner of the Marauders map with all of the add-ons, including the 3D stairs. The prize goes to David Rosenfeld. Congratulations, and I've sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.